Our next guest in studio is David Astudillo. David hails from the South American nation of Venezuela, currently studying film and video production at Grand Valley State University. He joins us to talk about his own personal journey and the magic of storytelling. David, welcome to Feel Like You Belong. Thank you. So storytelling is really an art, and all of us consume media. We consume film. We, we, we watch you know, TV and movies, and we take it in. But you're on the other side of that in terms of you actually create this. Talk about growing up and your consumption and how this became an interest like, hmm, I think I'd like to do this. So my first contact with film was with my grandparents in San Antonio de los Altos, outside Caracas. Uh, we used to go to the theater, um, watch movies at home, and uh, I remember my grandpa first introduced me to the different aspects of film, which are cinematography, lighting, sound, all, all of these uh, uh, technical aspects, and that really made me appreciate it. Was he a media more. professional? No, he's just into a lot of things. He's into classical music, literature, movies, and he really enriched me in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I came to the States, I came with a passion for this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Because I had, uh, I've always had this artistic drive to do drawing or music, and I was trying to find a place where I could do all of those things at the same time. Mm -hmm. And film was that for me. So there I could do um, visual and uh, musical and artistic, just blend all of those things together and express myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how does a kid from you know, outside Caracas find his way to West Michigan thousands of miles away? Well, this is really a miracle of God. Um, we had um, a family in the state that was in the United States that was friends with my family back in Venezuela. And uh, one day they said, we think uh, your kid will do really well in school here. And as I was struggling to find um, spaces available in college in Venezuela, um, one day they said, bring it over, we'll welcome him. And they, I, I felt like um, it was a very warm home where I, I found like belonging. And uh, then I started, we, we just were looking for a college and we picked Grand Valley. And then, uh, yeah, after I came to Grand Valley, the university also helped me tremendously. and. It's just a miracle. I mean, I thank them and the university. And they and have a, a long established film video program. And so you just fit right in. Yes, the f I remember my first day of school, uh, my major was photography. I love photography and, and storytelling through pictures. But then I realized that all of, all of my peers, they were asked by Professor Tony Thompson, uh, what do you want to do? What is your major? What, what are you going to do uh, in your life? And they were saying all of these great things, doctor and like engineer. And it was like, well, all the time, what I really wanted to do was film. So why do I not go for what I really want? So that my first day of school, I changed my major to uh, film and video and left photography as a minor. But the, the Two majors complement each other. Absolutely, wonderfully. They're, they're deeply connected. So, you know, the uh, the aesthetics and the uh, yeah. the understanding of subjects and the lighting and everything. So wonderful, wonderful. So I want to go back to Venezuela because the country is really in turmoil right now. It's really in the uh, the largest economic crisis of of its history. Talk about um, the hard times there and and the struggles that the people uh, are undergoing. Yeah, so I, I was able to come to the United States a little before the second largest wave of migration uh, exploded. So while I was here, I saw the country crumble down uh, while my family is still down there. Uh, my grandparents, 
uh, my mom and dad. My brother migrated, had to migrate to Argentina because he was going nowhere down there. And, and uh, there's really limited yeah. opportunities for young people. Yes, there is. <laughs> you can't do anything. Uh, college is always uh, in uh, paro, in stop. Uh, they, they cancel classes for long, long periods of time. Wow. Um, and really, the crisis, it's so complex that it's difficult to put it in a nutshell. But I will say that the worst thing is the humanitarian crisis uh, of shortage of food, medicines, uh, lack of basic services like water, electricity. And yes, the people are desperate and they're going out to the nearby countries. And so there's also a uh, migration crisis occurring all in the whole hemisphere. Sure. And you were talking earlier about your, your family and just the personal impact on them. You're trying to set up uh, yes. conversations. So um, one, uh, I think it was last week that uh, I was going to talk with my family. We do FaceTime all the time to connect. Um, I wrote to them. And later, like at 11 p.m., they write back, uh, sorry, the power just came back. Uh, it was gone for four hours. And the water service also came back. It was gone the whole week. So they were running to do dishes, wash clothes, fill up the tanks so they can have water. So they're really surviving. They, they don't have, it's not, that is not living, that is surviving. Yeah. And we don't see um, any short-term or long-term solutions uh, after the opposition is no longer a, a, a group of people that can successfully take us out of this tyrannic dictatorship. So the, the issue is very, very complex. So um, Venezuelans are really looking for you know, help. Somebody please you know, take us in, give us a chance, give us know, some temporary yes. shelter so that we can resume our lives in some reasonable way. Uh, I mean, the most, the, the largest concentration of Venezuelans is in Miami. And they've been asking for special protection or shelter or a law that really allows them to, uh, to work and to be here legally in so that they can survive and support their families. I mean, at least in the time in which this crisis is going uh, on. So we just really need, not only from the states, but the nearby countries to really welcome us and help us. We need lots of help. Sure. Yes. I'm yes. gonna switch topics right now. And mm -hmm. you're a filmmaker. You were mm -hmm. actually starting to practice your craft. You spent the last summer in Argentina shooting a, uh, your first film, Pagan Poetry. Tell us about that experience. So uh, last summer, I had a lovely visit with my family, uh, my mom and my brother who lives there. And uh, we had a house. So your mom's in Argentina too? She traveled okay. to visit my brother. She hasn't seen him in, I mean, like, more than a year. My goodness. Uh, so lovely visit. And then we had a house all for ourselves. And I came with my equipment. So we prepared. And we shot my first Latin American film, or my first Venezuelan film. It was all in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And uh, that film is very important for me, because there I started to find my voice as a Latin American and finding my identity as a Latin American filmmaker and moving away from, I guess, the impositions of Hollywood or what is expected from uh, commercially successful movies. And it was, I, I, I see every film as a little battle where I struggle to find this voice and every battle is in some way a little victory or a little defeat. But from a defeat, you gain much. So this film was a victory, I will say, in, uh, in terms of finding my Latin American voice. 
and I hope that my next films will be influenced uh, by that, not only aesthetically, but also uh, in terms of storytelling narrative. So we were talking earlier, you came with a lot of passion, with a lot of energy, uh, imagination, but you didn't have all of the skills. Talk about how you've honed your skills over the last several years here in, in West Michigan. It's been, uh, it's been a wonderful journey at Grand Valley. When I came, I didn't know how to use a camera. I didn't know about editing, um, coloring, sound, nothing. And I remember my first classes with uh, Suzanne Sack, uh, Kim Roberts, and then going with very influential figures like Arnold Shaw. And they taught me just little by little each piece of uh, the technical aspects and inspired me to really find my voice. And I just feel like I belong in Grand Valley because uh, they appreciate so much your culture and where you come from. Mm -hmm. They really, they call me by, they call me David. They don't even call me David. Like it's, uh, it's amazing how they just push me to be truly who I am uh, as a Venezuelan and then use the technical skills that they're teaching me to then make cool stuff. Awesome, awesome. Uh, we're gonna have to wrap up in just a minute, but uh, last question, if there are uh, aspiring artists and filmmakers out there, do you have any advice to give them? Yes, um, I will say, find your voice. That's the single piece of advice that I've been giving Agri Valley that has truly helped me. Um, don't try to copy, you can borrow from the movies out there, but find your voice and be honest and true to what you really want to say through film with no shame, with no restraints. And uh, it's, really, it's really a matter of personal effort. Like school can help you so far, but it, it is you, the one that has to uh, work out everything that you learn and find, I mean, tutorials, master classes, people who inspire you uh, and just get on it. Like filmmaking is, is not like uh, something that you learn from a textbook. It's something that you, it's a craft that you just work uh, by yourself basically. Okay, so basically get in touch with your authenticity. Authenticity, yes. Uh, so finding my authenticity is where that those battles that I talked to you about come in. Mm -hmm. um, in, I'm in each of those battles, I'm seeking my authenticity. And I'm glad that I'm finally finding it in my uh, Latin American identity. Mm -hmm. Well, David, David, uh, it's been a real joy talking with you here today. Thank Time you. has flown by, but you're doing really great stuff and we look forward to staying in touch with you. Um, if people want to support any of your projects, how might they get a hold of you? So find me on Instagram uh, at davidfilm80. And that's where I, where I post my things and where they can keep in track of what I'm doing. We'll put that on the screen for our viewers. Thanks again for coming cool. by, really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Ellen. You bet. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. If you're watching us on TV, stay tuned for our following segments on language and culture. If you're watching Feel Like You Belong on the internet, we hope you will share your feedback with us via our website and YouTube channel. And be sure to catch our many other stories about the amazing individuals making our communities more creative and authentic spaces.